Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to discuss hypocrisy of many of the western anti-war people and I want to take as an example Tulsi Gabbard because she revealed that she's been in Africa for four months where she's been supporting the African mission. Basically she's been supporting the US army wage war on our continent. Now Tulsi Gabbard is somebody who's very anti-war but before we get to that let me just show you what she said about her mission in Africa. Uh, you haven't heard much from me lately. I've been gone for the last four months serving on an active duty tour and deployment to Africa as a civil affairs officer. I was supporting a special forces mission to go after Al Qaeda affiliated jihadists. Now, every single day it was truly my honor to work with incredible patriots, experienced, focused warriors with an unwavering commitment to serve our country. We should never forget that you know, no matter the decisions that the politicians make or the careerists in the Pentagon make, it is our men and women in uniform who selflessly and quietly defend the safety, security and freedom of our country every day. Now, I haven't posted much since I was gone because I was asked not to talk about my going overseas until my mission was complete. Al Qaeda is very active where we were and as someone who has a high profile, I would have been a prime target for the enemy, putting my life and the lives of my fellow service members and our mission in greater danger. Now I look forward to discussing the foreign and domestic issues and challenges that we're facing in our country. So basically the US soldiers who are in Africa, they are very brave and it's great that they are there and she was very proud that they are fighting this brave fight in our continent. Now, let me show you what she said about the war in Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria, because supposedly this lady is very anti-war. And the kind of leadership that I bring comes from this experience of ending these wasteful regime change wars that have cost so many lives and trillions of hard-earned taxpayer dollars that instead of going towards investing in the needs of our people, things like health care, education, infrastructure, uh, protecting our environment, trillions of dollars have been going to pay for these wasteful wars and this new Cold War and nuclear arms race. Now, I just want to say that she's not the only one. I think Ilhan Omar AOC, a lot of people who act as if they are anti-war in the West. Usually, when it comes to our continent, they are perfectly fine with France, with US waging war. Now, Tulsi Gabbard, she couldn't say this about Syria. Do you think that if she was invited to be part of the US army mission in Syria, do you think she would go? Do you think she would go to Afghanistan? to Iraq, to Yemen, to any of these places. No, she wouldn't, because she knows if she goes there, there would be a backlash, because every time those countries are mentioned, the first reaction to many of people is to say, leave, stop the war, and end the occupation. But when it comes to Africa, it's a different story. She feels perfectly comfortable to supporting US mission. Not only that, she feels perfectly comfortable to put this video out, telling people that she's been fighting in a foreign war for four months. Now, the thing about Africa and the US mission in Africa is that they do not have enough soldiers to actually do anything. So it's been revealed many times that the point of Africa and the point of these US missions is firstly to basically make sure that those countries do not make any deals with China or with Russia. How that would affect our security um as Americans and particularly in North America, if the Chinese are able to establish a base in West Africa, uh, it would uh, it would put uh, it would change the whole calculus of the geostrategic uh, um, uh, global campaign plans of protecting the homeland. Uh, it would shorten their if they they build any uh, capacity on the West Coast uh, geostrategically, it will put them at an advantage. Right now, we have the decisive advantage. They cannot uh, we can't let them have a base on the West Coast because it would change the dynamics. That's why they are. For example, in Somalia, in Mali, in Burkina Faso, the whole point is not to actually win against the terrorists, because how can you win when every single year you have more enemies? When the Africa mission started, I think it was in like one or two countries, and now it's operating in like 10 different countries. 
How is it possible that the longer you stay, the more terrorists they are? How is it possible that the longer you stay, the more areas they control? How is it possible? It shouldn't be possible, right? Because you're waging a war, and these people who are waging the wars are so brave. And the U.S. soldiers in Africa, because they learn from Black Hawk Down, they don't actually engage in direct conflicts. They tried a couple of times, but it was a massive failure. So what they do is they drone strike people to death. And it has been revealed multiple times that about 90% of the drone victims are innocent civilians. There's thousands of drone strikes every day in our continent, and thousands of civilians die on a daily basis. And she is supporting that. And she's telling us that the people who are killing these innocent farmers and innocent civilians are so very brave and we should all applaud them. Absolutely not. The whole point of the US war is to keep these countries in a constant instability. By the way, Donald Trump pulled 900 soldiers from Somalia, which was amazing and great, but there wasn't any change in the situation. It wasn't like when the soldiers left Al-Shabaab was taking over this place and that place and they were winning the war. No. And actually during that time, the Somali army was able to gain strength because they knew that there was nobody helping them. So they actually had to step up and we are seeing the fruits right now because currently the government is winning. That's why it would be better if all of these soldiers left. The whole point is this, right? If you are against US army and US soldiers in Syria, you are against them in Afghanistan, you should be against them being in Burkina Faso, in Somalia, and in any part of our continent because they haven't brought any benefit. And the main reason why AFRICOM is so important to the US Army is because it allows them to monitor what China is doing. And on top of that, it's been revealed multiple times that Africa is one of the major places where CIA has major operations. In all the bases where AFRICOM is, there is CIA black sites. They use those bases to torture people. They use those places to plan their next regime change missions. But somehow, according to this lady, those people are all brave and great. As I said before, she's not the only one. A lot of the Western anti-war people are always for war in our continent. But anyways, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please do remember to subscribe, like, share and comment and do take care.